Welcome back to more Persona 2 Innocent Sin. I start recording the next episode and decide to shop and get new equipment, get more Personas. And all of a sudden, 40 minutes have gone by. And I didn't want to cut any of it because I want you to know what I have equipped. And I want you to know which Personas I got. And I want you to see which Personas I did not get. That way, you can be like, hey, you missed this really good Persona back there. You should probably go pick that up. And I could be like, yeah, you're probably right, I'll go do that. So, I've decided to make it a bonus episode. To make it more interesting, because I know you don't want to just listen to me ramble about watches all day, I've decided to give my thoughts on the game so far. I figure that we're far enough into the game where I could have formed actual thoughts about the game. And after that, I'll probably talk about what I'm thinking currently of doing once Innocent Sin is over, because there is a slight problem with that. And I'll get to that later. Overall, I think the game's really good. I find it very enjoyable. I'm really happy I decided to play it. Graphically, the game looks really nice. All the characters are unique looking, the demon designs are really cool. It, it looks very clean. It has a very distinct style, and I like that. I also like how all of the locations you go to look different from each other. It's not just, oh, this place is just a copy of this place, and this place is just a copy of this place. The menus are nice. They're not confusing at all. I like the theme of red. I wonder if that has any kind of symbolic significance. I don't think so, but it might. And I never get confused at what I'm looking at. I always understand visually what's going on, and that's important. So graphically, I would say that this game is really good, especially for being a PSP game. Which, I don't think PSP games normally look that good, but this one, it pulls it off. I don't know what the original PlayStation version looked like, but I can only assume that this is an improvement. I can't see them making a remake and then having it look worse than the original game, so I'm just going to say that graphically, this game's good. Sound-wise, the voice acting is surprisingly well done. I wasn't expecting that. Normally, voice acting from this era of game is not that great, although I suppose this is a remake, so that might be the reason why it's actually decent. In fact, I would say it's more than decent. I would say that it's good. I think I already said that it's good. I should actually pay attention to myself sometimes. The music, though, isn't that great. Well, yeah, it's not that great. It's good, but it's not really great. And that's unfortunate, because I think that music is one of the most important parts of a game. Music, if it's memorable, you'll remember it years later, and you'll be like, that was a good game, I'll go replay that game. This game doesn't really have any of that. It has some. And I guess that's all that matters, is that there's a couple. The only ones I can really think of is the theme that plays whenever Maya's on the screen, or whenever Maya's doing something important. I guess that's Maya's theme. And the overworld theme, whenever you're in the city. I really like that one too. And that brings me to my second point about the music. There's two themes in an RPG that you want to be really good. The overworld theme, which it is in this game, which is good and the battle theme. That's because those tend to be the two pieces of music that you listen to the most. Either while you're exploring the overworld or when you're in a battle, which is half the game. And this game's battle theme, I don't like that much. It's okay, but it doesn't really get me pumped up for a battle, which is what they should do. And it's just a little disappointing that that happened. Although I do like the theme that plays when you're fighting the Longinus. I think that one's pretty cool. And I think the boss fight theme's okay. I think the boss fight theme is better than okay. I would say it's better than the normal battle theme, which is good. You want the battle theme to be not necessarily worse than the boss theme, but you want the boss theme to be more intense, I suppose. I guess it depends on the mood you're going for, but I think that overall the music in this game is good and not great, which is unfortunate. The rest of the sound, it works. It's nice. It's 
what you expect to hear. And that's good. You don't want fire to appear on the screen and then be like, Oh, but we're making a water noise. What? I'm seeing fire, but I'm hearing water. What is this? No, it all makes sense. It's good sound design. Story-wise, I'm really liking it. It's crazy. This is one of the most insane stories I think I've ever experienced. The game starts off nice. In fact, I would say it starts off a little slow, but it doesn't have as slow of a start as other RPGs. You get into the action pretty quickly, and from there it just gets crazier and crazier, which is awesome. This is one of the few games that I've played in a long time that have actually surprised me as to where the story is going. Once I, When I originally started this game, I would have never been able to say, and spoilers for obvious reasons in case you haven't watched all 30-something episodes, I would have never been able to say that Hitler was in this game. That was just out of left field. Came out of nowhere, man. And same as with... Well, I did predict June being Joker, huh? And I don't know who Aquarius was. I think all of my predictions, but two were wrong. So, that's something. That helps prove that I was not expecting this story at all. And I think that's a good thing. But at the same time, they're kind of treading the line of being too ridiculous. Because you don't... You want it to be surprising, but you don't want it to be like, What is going on here? Why is this happening? I don't understand, like, this doesn't make any sense. And that happens sometimes, but at least they explain it, which is good. You don't want to leave any loose storylines. And I guess since we're not too far... Well, not not too far. And since I haven't finished the game, we don't know if there's going to be any loose plot lines or whatever, but so far they've done a good job of wrapping up stories once characters leave and I really like the main characters as well. They all seem relatable. They all have their flaws and they all... You like them. You, you genuinely like them. You don't hate any of them. At least I don't hate any of them. I like them all and I don't want anything to happen to them. Which is good writing. Because that, I don't normally feel that way. And they develop. They've actually grown since we began. And while you have your main characters, you also have your villains. And a good story has to have a good villain. I would say that the villains of this game started off really weak. Hanya and the student council president, even Prince Taurus. None of them really had good motivation for doing what they were doing, and I didn't really appreciate them as villains. Joker was always just kind of mysterious, and he didn't... It was impossible to know how good of a villain he really was. And then around Leo is when it started to get really good. The villains actually had motivation behind them. We actually learned about them. We learned why they were doing this. And that made a huge difference. I think Leo was a really good villain. So was Joker, who's now a good guy. Which is always cool to see a villain become good. We don't know enough about June's father yet to know if he's a good villain, but he certainly seems menacing. And then of course there's Hitler, who kind of feels like a cop-out, honestly. It's like, we need a good bad guy, who should we use? Well, there's the Nazis. Yeah, we should go with Nazis. You know what else? Let's just bring back Hitler, too. But I'm happy they did, because those sunglasses are amazing. So far, I'm really liking the story. I'm liking the characters, I'm liking the villains. It's a fun ride so far, and I'm looking forward to seeing where that goes. But you could have a really good story and have a terrible game if the gameplay was horrible. Thankfully, I think that the gameplay is actually one of the strongest parts of this game. With every RPG, you have kind of two modes of playing. There's the combat part and the out-of-combat part. The combat is great. It feels very different, and I enjoy it. I feel it could be shortened a bit. It feels a little long. Maybe because summoning personas takes so long to do. But the most interesting point of the combat 
is the fact that you don't have to fight them. Normally, you can either fight them or run away, but in this game, you can actually contact your enemies. And not only that, but become friends with them. And that's just a really cool concept. The fact that that pact that you form with a demon can then benefit you in future battles is really cool. And of course, you can also make them run away, or you can make them give you cards which will make you more powerful in the future, or you can just fight them for experience. You have a lot of flexibility in the combat thanks to the contacting system. I just wish that it was used in boss fights. Because that, the boss fights are a major part of the combat system, and contacting is never used there, and it feels like you're just kind of wasting that entire system when you don't use it in the boss fights. I'm not saying that you become friends with the bosses or anything, although that would have been really cool. But I'm saying... Maybe make it so that it affects the way the boss behaves in the battle, depending on how contacting him goes. It had a lot of potential, and I feel like they didn't fully utilize it. They could have they could have even made contacting affect the story depending on how you contacted the boss. There could have been ways they could do it, but the contacting system is really cool, and it's definitely what makes the entire game unique. I can't really think of any other game that does that. Maybe the Shin Megami Tensei series, since that's what the Persona series is a spin-off of, but I've never played any of those games, so I don't know how similar Persona 2 is to those. I really love the auto battle system. It allows you to just, for easy fights, press a button and just let it run through, or if you don't want to have to push commands for your party the entire every single turn, you can just push the button and it'll keep going for you. And the fact that you can cancel out of it at any time, even if you're not in auto battle mode, so that you can change your next party member's action, it definitely makes it more strategic. I do wish that they made it easier to switch personas in battle. And I feel like I've talked about this in several episodes now, but the fact that you can't change all of your personas before going into fight and then getting to that person's turn and then pressing persona to switch their persona out, it makes it more complicated than it needs to be sometimes. I suppose what you could do is set the turn order so that the person was at the top of the list and then you pick their persona and then you set the turn order back, but it just seems too complicated and it feels like it could have been made easier. Although speaking of personas, I really like the way they encourage you to use them. The fact that every time you use your persona, it causes your persona to get closer to leveling up, encourages you to use them over and over and over again, even if they cost way too much SP. And you're still rewarded for it by getting even more powerful moves, and those moves cost the same SP as the less powerful moves. So you really have no reason not to use your persona except to conserve SP. And then there's also the fusion spells, which have a slight bit of risk, where it takes multiple turns to do so to activate the fusion spell. But by doing the fusion spell, you deal more damage, and you have the possibility of mutating your persona, which then makes your persona even stronger and possibly gives them new skills. I don't know if fusion spells allow your persona to rank up, but even if it doesn't, that gives even more flexibility. It's like, do you want to risk a mutation, or do you want to rank your persona up? And that's really neat. Feels like a lot of thought went into the combat. I do wish they made status ailments more useful. And this is a complaint I have with a lot of RPGs. Status ailments... You never really have a reason to use them. And it feels like a waste to get a persona that 
just uses status ailments because I would never want to use the status ailments because most enemies seem to be resistant to them. And even when they're weak to them, you very... It seems very unlikely for them to actually inflict the status ailment on the enemy. And it feels more appropriate to just attack them instead of poisoning them or putting them to sleep. And I feel like the status ailments are actually used by the enemies and it it's an inconvenience to me, but I never have a reason to use it on my enemies. So why do they give me the abilities in the first place if I have no reason to use them? I kind of wish more thought was put into that. Because there's definitely things you could do. Off the top of my head, you can make an enemy that's resistant to basically everything but status ailments, where poison would be more effective than actually attacking. And pair him up with a couple of other enemies, and then at the start of the battle, you want to poison him and start dealing with the other enemies. And by the end of the fight, he would be dead along with his comrades. And that's how you can make poison effective. Another way you can make charm effective, for instance, by having a boss fight with two minions. And those minions happen to be really good against the boss, and they also happen to be weak to charm. So you want to charm the enemies to attack the boss with you to make the boss a bit easier. And you kind of have to balance using charm and your attack abilities because eventually the charm wears off. So there are ways you could implement it so that you need to use status ailments. And I kind of wish more RPGs would do this, not just Persona 2. And speaking of bosses... This game doesn't seem to have a lot of boss variety. It seems like the bosses, at least for the first half of the game, were just attack, 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 attack. Sometimes you use your spells that are weak, and eventually he'll go down. And he'll just attack you, and you'll just heal when you get a little low. And that seems to be every boss. With the occasional, oh, you have only two party members this time, or, oh, there's two enemies facing you this time. Which is a little disappointing, although, I feel like around the time we got to the first Longinus fight, the bosses have been getting better. The first Longinus fight, you were two against one, so it was just one of those again. But he could also seal your persona away, making you have to think about how to use that with your other character. So one character suddenly was just using items, and the other character was still attacking. That was interesting. And then the second Longinus fight, where each one had different weaknesses, and so you wanted to kind of pick them off one by one after figuring out their weaknesses. That was kind of cool. And there were, of course, three of them. So that was, again, just extra enemies. And then the Joker fight was really neat, how... He gave different status ailments with each attack, and you had to handle that. You had to learn to deal with that. And his attacks actually dealt more damage. The second Joker fight was also interesting, because you had him dealing damage, and several of his moves, I think, had the ability to instantly kill you. And so with Aikichi, you wanted to have him block all of those instant kill moves, and then with the other characters you were attacking, and then he would try to instant kill you, and you would want Akechi to do that again. It at least made you have to have a different strategy, other than find the weakness and exploit it. So, I realized that that's after I switched to hard, the bosses started getting more interesting, and I have to wonder if, if I had been on hard the entire game, if the bosses would have been more interesting. It doesn't seem like it would be, but it's possible. I am looking forward to seeing what bosses there are in the future. I hope it's not just a bunch of other Longinus fights, since there are several of them left. Because the bosses so far, they, they do seem to be improving on variety, and I like that. And I'm interested to see where, how they try to change up the combat later on in the game. Out of combat, there's not much to talk about. 
Yeah, I find it interesting that there's no overworld, like tradi traditional overworld that's in RPGs. Like in Final Fantasy, for instance, you have the big map and you explore it and you find these dungeons and you go do those. And then in this game, it's more or less just you pick an area and there's people you can talk to there, there's some shops, and then you go into a dungeon. And you don't have to worry about random encounters or anything like that. And I kind of like that. It streamlines the experience a bit. You're just doing the dungeons. I like both examples. I think they both are good. With the length of the battles, I don't think I would have liked the overworld map Final Fantasy style in this game. So I think they made a good decision there. There also seems to be a lot of variety in the dungeons, which is nice. Each one has its own unique feel, like Smile Hirasaka, you had to go and find each of your party members again. The Aerospace Museum, you had to rescue the children from the fire. The caves, you had to avoid the pitfalls or else you had to go back upstairs and avoid more pitfalls. And then in the Caracol, you had those teleporting platforms, which I kind of wish they used a bit more. But each dungeon feels unique, and I like that. And then I think the real meat of the game being the rumor spreading. That's a really cool concept, how the rumors that you find affects the way the game will be played later on. I don't know if it's because I just haven't been to a rumor monger lately, but it feels like the game kind of dropped it at the moment. I think that might just be because I haven't talked to any of the rumor mongers, but... I hope they didn't just be like, oh, in the beginning of the game you get all these rumors and you can choose from them and there you go, it affects the game later on. I hope there's more rumors that I get to spread later. Because that's a really cool idea. The other big chunk of the out of combat stuff is just the persona system in general. You get the cards from the battles and then you get to choose your stats, basically. You get to choose what abilities you're gonna be getting. You're gonna choose how much your stats increase or decrease based off of the Persona's stats, since it takes your stats and the Persona stats and averages them. And then you also get to choose your weaknesses and resistances. It's a cool system. It does feel a little grindy. You have to grind for cards to get better Personas. Although, I feel like I've been able to get the Personas that I want based off of the cards that I got. I was able to get pretty good Personas without having to grind, really. I just got cards from every battle. It does make the battles take longer, but that's okay. I also feel like the Persona system in general makes it so that equipment is completely unnecessary in this game. And I feel like they could have gotten rid of equipment completely, and I wouldn't have noticed. I think the majority of your stack gains come from Personas. Or at least they could have made it so that the stack gains come from Personas, instead of equipment. And then in chests, instead of finding... Instead of finding equipment that you can equip to yourself, you can find those material cards that will make the even better Personas. So I feel like they could have gotten rid of equipment completely and just used the personas. That does make me kind of wish there was a game where your equipment gave you your skills and your stuff so you wouldn't want to just get rid of your equipment. Because at the moment it's just, oh, here's an upgrade, here's an upgrade, here's an upgrade. There's no real paths to choose between equipment. It just feels kind of shoehorned in there. And the Personas make it completely unnecessary, really. And that's my thoughts on the game. The gameplay is its most solid part, which is the most important part. I think the story has a lot of good stuff going for it. I haven't completed the story yet, so I can't really give my final judgment on that. And I can't really give my final judgment on any of this, really. I think the sound so far has been... It's definitely the weakest part of the game. That and graphics are probably the weaker parts of the game. But they're still good. And they don't... break away... They don't 
make the experience any less enjoyable. I think it has a lot of really interesting ideas, and I'm excited to see the challenges I'll face and where the story takes me. So let's talk about what I want to do after Innocent Sin, because although I'm assuming we have a decent chunk of game left, I do feel like we're in the final stretch. So after Innocent Sin, there is of course a sequel called Eternal Punishment. I was originally going to play that one first, but then I learned Innocent Sin was a thing. I didn't know Innocent Sin existed. Thankfully, I did a tiny bit of research. Eternal Punishment is for the PlayStation. However, there was also a remake for Eternal Punishment on the PSP, just like Innocent Sin. Unfortunately, it was only released in Japan. And to make matters worse, the remake had extra story. I'd like to play the remake, and thankfully there is fan translations being worked on right now. So, what I'm thinking about doing is waiting for the fan translation to be done so that I can play the PSP version of Eternal Punishment after Innocent Sin. Because I don't want to go back to the PlayStation style of Persona 2 after having experienced the PSP version of Persona 2 before the PlayStation version. It would just feel like a step backwards. I Also, playing Persona 2 in a Eternal Punishment right after Innocent Sin would probably make me sick of Persona after I completed Eternal Punishment, and I don't want that to happen. There's also a large number of game series that I would like to play. For instance, I have a huge list. Let me read off a couple of them. Grandia. Grandia? Grandia? I don't know how it's pronounced. I'm gonna say Grandia. Wild Arms. Super Mario RPG. Parasite Eve. Xenogears. Final Fantasy V. Final Fantasy VII. Final Fantasy VIII. Final Fantasy IX. Yeah, there's a lot of Final Fantasies on there. Jeez. Uh, Chrono Trigger. Chrono Cross. Secret of Mana. You get the idea. I've never played any of those games, and I hear that they're all really good. So, I think I'm going to play one of those after Innocent Sin, and see how far along the fan translation for Eternal Punishment gets along. And if after one of those games, the fan translation has barely made any progress, I'll play the, play I'll play the PlayStation version of Eternal Punishment. That's what I'm thinking. Let me know your thoughts on that, because you're the people that matter here. But that's my plans for the future. I gave you my impressions on the game. Looks like there's still... about 15 minutes left on the recording. So, I'm gonna let past me continue to ramble on about what he's been rambling on about. It's probably nothing good. And I'll see you next time. Have a good night. Let me know your thoughts. And bye. Or water. I can't give him Garu. There's no point in doing those either. Kotaludi. What is Kotaludi? I don't know. Samakaja, Sukukaja, Dekaja, Estoma. I don't know what Estoma is either. I need to find out what these do. Do you have one of them? No? Kotaludi. Let's see what Kotaludi does. Cures possession. Meh. I don't care about that. Nirvana. Okay. Estoma. Avoid combat with low-level enemies. That could be neat. I don't think Genbu needs it. But that could be neat. Dekaja and Sukukaja. If I were to do that, could he... He can. 
So what's Daikaja and Sukukaja? Rakukaja. Uh, Daikaja. Remove all status increases from one enemy. Meh. I've never seen an enemy get a status boost. And then Sukukaja. One of these needs it. Suku Kaja. Sama Kaja. Not Suku Kaja, though. Where is it? Oops, didn't mean to do that. What is this? Oh. That one has Makakaja. Uh, Sukukaja? Sukukaja? Aha! Increase agility. Meh. Meh. Well. All Zack. Dormina. Recarm might be worth it. Yeah, I'm going with Recarm. Don't worry about that. Yeah. Turtle time! Genbu. Thanks, Genbu. That's neat. So we have a new persona! Woo! We're not done, though. We're also going to get Vivian. Nah, I'm gonna get Mananan. And we'll give him... Here, have some wind. I don't know why. We'll just do it. Why wind? Well, it will allow us to do some fusion skills, I guess. So, there will be some use to it, I suppose. Mananan, one who rideth the waves of the sea. Yes, we shall row together. Who else? We're not done. I could get Vivian. Don't see the point. Pyrojack, though. No. No, do not be drawn in by the cuteness. We're getting Toxaka for sure. Firestorm's the high fire. High havoc. High almighty. Agilao. Yeah. And let's give him... Samakaja. Don't know what it does, but it'll be cool.
And we'll give it strength since Mitchell's going to be using it the most. That will suffice. He's literally a fish. How is he the king of a snake? He's a fish. Whatever. Was there any others? Barbatos, nah. Nah. Maybe? Nah. Maybe? Maybe. Uh. No. Did I even look at the world? I don't think I did. Aquadine. Makakarn. Megidola. Muka Linda, huh? But this is the one. This dude knows what's up. Look at him. Supreme God. Magnadine. Ma Magnadine. And Earth's Anger. Deal high earth damage to all enemies. Deal high earth damage to an enemy group. Deal fury ailment. Recover full HP for one ally. Sacrifice self to revive and recover. Why can't I get this one? Why can't I get you? Material card? Okay. Do I need another Earth? Not really. But he has some good healing. Get in here. We'll give you... We'll give you a... Uh... We'll give you a bit of fire as well. Have some agility. We'll get him. Why not? We're on a persona spree today. From onions? We're just like ogres. Hmm. Alright, now comes the hard part. We gotta mess with our personas. Well, we have one free. We can put Gimbu there. Maya... That removes Media. And it removes Hama. But we have some with Hama, so. Let's get Mananan in there. Volcanus. Oh, we can easily get rid of Volcanus. And we'll get Taksaka in there instead. Uh, who else? Eros. Never even got Eros to max. I'm going to put Eros in here anyway.
I'm confident that I can remove these two. I no longer need them. I'm gonna keep arrows just to get her to max rank and then I'll remove her as well. Let's return... Maya... and Volcanus. Not arrows. And we'll keep the rest. They will all disappear in time, but for now, they are still useful. Because we don't want to use all of the really high SP personas at the same time. Alright, how many free cards do I have? 59. That's it? Well, I'm not gonna waste him. Not until I know there's a certain persona I want. Well. This was quite... The episode, wasn't it? That's why I'm calling this a bonus episode, and not an actual episode, because it was literally... 40 plus minutes of me picking out personas to use. And also me buying some stuff at the beginning. So next time... We will continue the story, and go get whatever the skulls are, stop Hippler and uh, June's father from destroying the world. But for now, we're done. So thanks for watching. Have a good night. I don't know if I said that the last couple of videos, but I'm saying it now. Have a good night.